Hi, James. Hi, Betty. How are you today? I'm good. Where do you live? Uh, I'm east of Dallas, actually. Oh, you are? Oh, I thought I was hoping you were calling from Ireland. <laughs> no. Well, well, <laughs> well, that's where I'm originally from, but no, I, I've lived here in Texas since 94. Oh, I live in Texas. I live an hour west of Fort Worth. Oh, okay, yeah, we're just east of Dallas. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. You write for an Irish publication? Well, yeah, well, I set up the site a couple of years ago, um, but most of it is aimed towards the American and Canadian markets, but we're slowly reaching out into Europe uh, as we go along. That's cool. Yeah. Great. <laughs> well, first of all, I'd like to say thank you for taking the time to speak with me today. I know you have a busy schedule. Oh, sure. Happy to talk to you. We're going to be talking today uh, about your latest movie, Split, which comes out in Blu-ray and DVD April 18th from Universal Pictures Home Entertainment, and in which you star alongside James McAvoy and Anya Taylor-Joy. And it's directed by M. Night Shyamalan, whom you worked with previously on 2008's The Happening. What was it like for you to work with him again after all these years? Well, I love him. And, you know, he's a brilliant guy, and he's super fun to be around. He's a very joyous person. He has a beautiful family and a great family of uh, co-workers. There's a team of people that he works with in Philadelphia who are incredible at what they do, at movie makers, and they, uh, the majority of them have worked with him in the majority of his movies. And so that's a great group to be a part of, a great team to be a member of. And so it's really fun to go back and work with them all again. Um, he told me that he wrote this part for me, which was a real gift. Then to get to work with James McAvoy was an extraordinary blessing. You know, he's the guy's brilliant yeah. and also a very, very nice man. So, you know, on the set, Knight is very passionate, very sure of what he wants, and everybody works their asses off to make sure he gets what he wants, you know, because we all love him so much. But he's very joyous and passionate and funny, and he's mischievous, and so was <laughs> James McAvoy, and so am I, and so we would tease each other a lot, and that, that made it all extra fun. Yeah, I guess on a set that would make things a lot easier, considering the nature of the movie itself. Yeah, exactly. Just the kind of tension, tension breaker to tease each other, you know. <laughs> right, right. Well, this is your second collaboration working with Knight. Can we expect to see more of you in his future works? Well, I've told him, yeah, I beg him, I say anything. It doesn't matter even if it's the teeny tiniest part. Just call me, I'll be there. Just because it's so fun to be around him. But, uh, yeah, he's doing a sequel to Split right now, and I've pitched him on several ways he could bring, uh, bring me back as a relative of Dr. Fletcher or a different character that looks completely different. And he, he's... He, I don't think that'll happen, but <laughs> I keep pressuring him through texts and emails, and he's like, yikes, cripes, you know. Right. <laughs> he's, he's funny. So. Maybe they could use it like in a flashback scene, maybe, to the first movie. Yeah, uh, I, I actually would just, I can wear wigs, I can look different, <laughs> right. you know, I can act differently. <laughs> he's like, oh my goodness. Well, what was it about the part that attracted you to the role? Well, he wrote it for me. That's number one. But um, it's a it's a brilliant part. It's a beautiful role, and um, I've been interested in human psychology my whole life. I you know first was fascinated by this subject matter when I saw the film The Three Faces of Eve that starred Joanne Woodward, for which she won an Oscar, and um, and I read that book, and then I you know read the book Sybil in my college days, and liked that film that Sally Fields did of that subject yeah. matter. And then I've been in my own psychoanalysis uh, my, probably the majority of my adult life and have the equivalent of a psychology degree. So it's been, um, I, I love, uh, I'm fascinated by human psychology and so it was great to get to play Dr. Fletcher. Right. I worked with a psychologist several weeks before we started rehearsals, a psychologist uh, in uh, New York who had some um, experience with DID patients. I worked with her on FaceTime and then worked with her uh, in person in New York when I was in, in the city. And then she also availed herself to um, for late-night phone calls before um, in the big scenes I had with James to be sure that my notes were correct and that I was doing it as we had planned. And that was very helpful. And then I read three books, two that Knight recommended and one that I had already was familiar with about DID patients. So I was pretty well prepared when I got to the set. Well, terrific. That, that, that was the next question I was going to ask you if you had done any kind of research, because a lot of actors do that before they play a part. Yeah, definitely. Well, one aspect of the movie that I really liked was that it embodied three different age ranges. 
the older generation, the middle-aged generation, and the younger generation, do you think it might have been written deliberately to see how each of these characters dealt with the same horrors? Um, that's an interesting observation. Um, you know, I think Knight is a, an all-inclusive storyteller, and his stories, there's a resonance for people at every age. Um, yeah. I think that's maybe an aspect of his work, yes. Right. Well, towards the end of the film, but without giving away any spoilers, there's a very tense scene between you and James after you've gone to his home. And the scene was very emotional, but it also had a physical aspect attached to it. Did you have any concerns about the physical element before shooting the scene? Well, just to do it accurately, and um, it, Knight always has advisors there. He has a stunt advisor who was there um, for the scenes between James and I, an advisor who told me how to behave in those scenes. Right, right. Well, your very first film credit was in Brian De Palma's supernatural horror, Carrie, and Split, while not necessarily supernatural in tone, is very much a horror. And you seem to pop in and out of this particular genre from time to time. Is it one you actually like, or do you take the part offered to you based on how good the script is, regardless of genre? Yeah, based on who the collaborator is, who the filmmaker is, and uh, yeah, the, the quality of the role and the quality of the story. It is it is fascinating that it, I have repeated this genre more thriller than horror. But yeah, both movies, Carrie and Split, have a supernatural aspect. Right, right. You were recently inducted into the American Theatre Hall of Fame. As a performer for many years, was that something you aspired for, or did it just happen? It was really nice, yeah. It was a huge honor, and I was very grateful. I don't know if you know, but Split was nominated for a Saturn Award, and I was nominated for a Best Featured Actress Award, and the Saturn Awards are in Los Angeles on June 28th. Oh, terrific. Well, cool. congratulations. And, and then June 11th, the Actors Fund in L.A. has a big Tony Award, a viewing party, and they're uh, they're honoring me with the Julie Harris Award at that same event. So that's really nice. Oh, terrific. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, it's been really sweet. Okay, well, I have one final question for you. You have a, t a new two-disc album, which actually comes out today, titled Story Songs. Can you tell us a little more about that? Yeah, did they send you a copy of the album? Uh, they were supposed to send it to you on a SoundCloud link. They did, actually. I listened to a couple of songs, and it's the kind of jazz that I like, and that, yeah, that's why I wanted to ask you about that. I hope you enjoyed the record. I did very much. It's the kind of jazz. Some jazz can get a little too fast and furious for me, but I like it when it's a little bit slower, so I really liked some of the songs I listened to. Oh, good. Well, I've always thought of myself as a storyteller, and I love good story songs, so there's like a beginning, middle, and an end. And I have this brilliant collaborator named Christian Jacob that I've worked with for a number of years. This is my second album with him. Yeah. He also was the composer of the score of Sully for the uh, Clint Eastwood movie this past year, along oh, yeah. with his bandmates uh, from the Tierney Sutton band. And that soundtrack just came out as well. Um, so we worked on this collection of songs last summer when I was in L.A. He lives in L.A. and I live in Texas. But we were doing, um, I was doing Grey Gardens out there last summer and the Amundsen, at the Amundsen Theater and they gave us a rehearsal room and we worked worked together on this body of music last summer and then debuted it at Joe's Pub in the fall. It was very well received and then we went to the West Coast and San Francisco and Costa Mesa and we recorded multi-track recordings of the songs, uh, live recordings of the songs in um, Costa Mesa. And then this is the third album of mine. This is my 17th uh, album released by Palmetto Records, and uh, they're a lovely record company. They gave me a budget to do the live recording mixes and, you know, pay for everything. And then uh, they also uh, added a second CD of uh, a bonus, five bonus tracks from our previous show at Joe's Pub in 2015, five of my favorite songs and three stories. So um, it's, a, it's a nice live recording. I'm, I'm really happy with it, and I'm really excited that it was released today. Oh, terrific, terrific. And you mentioned that they did the soundtrack for Sully, and Clint Eastwood himself has always been big into jazz himself, so that, that wouldn't surprise yeah, me. Yeah, he is, yeah. He's a real fan of the Tierney Sutton Band and Christian's work, so that was right. really cool for them that that happened. But he's a brilliant pianist, and um, if you have the time to really listen to the record, just really sit down take it in. I think you'd enjoy it. Oh, I, I intend to do that this weekend. I do. Okay, well, folks, today I had the pleasure of speaking with the legendary Miss Betty Buckley, who is appearing in M. Night Shyamalan's latest horror thriller, Split, which comes out on Blu-ray and DVD April 18th from Universal Pictures Home Entertainment. Miss Buckley, it was an honor talking with you today, and I look forward to seeing and hearing much more from you in the near future. Thanks, James.